What's up everyone, Mark Lobliner, TigerFitness.com, CEO, MTS Nutrition. I wanted to talk a little about motivation. I did an Instagram story today. I got a lot of messages about people saying they want me to kind of delve further into this topic and I would like to do that as well because it's something that I hear a lot of people doing and seeing and you know, a lot of people are following some really inspirational people online. You know, they look at their Gary V's and hell, even like, you know, you look at people who are really successful and you're like, wow, that is motivating me. And anything that causes someone to get off their ass, get off the couch and make a difference and go and do something, that is something that to me is well worth it. It's something that drives somebody to be a better person, drives somebody to do something epic. What starts that little process in someone's mind that gets them to the point where they're like, you know what? I'm gonna make a change, I'm gonna make a difference. Whether that person goes out and starts a nonprofit to help veterans, whether that person goes out and invents something that improves the quality of life, whether that person goes out and simply contributes to society, that's something that is amazing. Whether that someone gets off the couch from being obese and makes a change in the gym, whether that someone goes from being unemployed and not driven to find a job, to going and interview until they find that job, to working hard every single damn day to become a better person, to contribute. Whether that person maybe doesn't go out and play with his kids and just realizes, you know what, I'm gonna make a change. Whatever drives that person to be that, I'm all for it. And there's a lot of great motivational speakers out there. But I wanted to kind of say my opinion on motivational speakers. Motivational speakers get paid. They get their $100 for you to go to their event to motivate you. I was on a flight once and I sat by a marriage counselor and I said, so are you married? No, I'm divorced. And I said, isn't that weird that you're a marriage counselor and you're divorced? And he said, you know what? I'm not paid to be married. I'm paid to help people with their marriages. And to me, I'm like, wait a second, hold up, hold up. So I look at these, um, for example, take Gary Vee. I know a lot of people who watch him. I've listened to his stuff and he's captivating. But I mean, for me, for me, he had seed money to start his company. You know what I mean? Like he inherited his parents' $3 million business. You know, I find him to be amazing when it goes for growing businesses, right? I'm like, dude, this guy's on point. He's motivating. He has a camera follow him around. He's pretty much reinvented how to vlog, where he literally has a camera crew on him at all times. And being that transparent and always be able to come up with something every day in his daily logs to help people. That's amazing. That's fucking astounding. But you know who I find in, more inspirational than that? is as someone who started down here, who didn't have seed money from my parents, I look at someone like Johnny Cochran, the famed O.J. Simpson attorney. I say O.J. Simpson attorney because Johnny Cochran did so much more than if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. Johnny Cochran was a man who was raised um, in South Central LA. Gang wars and drugs and violence, Johnny Cochran, little, little do people know, was known to work 24 hours and sleep in his office and just get every, do everything he could. He lived the American dream. He showed that through hard work, perseverance, and making the right choices, you can make it. You know, you can make it. No matter what you are, no matter what your color, your creed, your gender, if you work hard enough and you might have more obstacles than that spoon-fed white kid from the suburbs. I get it. Because where I grew up, you know, my mom had drug problems. My father had health problems. I had to fend for myself. A lot of my childhood, I raised myself. And I had to make those choices myself. And I made some really bad choices. I made some really, really bad choices. Including, um, I got in a lot of fights. I got caught up in the wrong crowd. Um, I did a lot of illegal activity. You know, um, and those are mistakes I made, but I was able to rectify and correct them. And there's always a second chance. And I get so many people, there's such a bad, and we've done videos about this, heroin epidemic, drug ep epidemic in America right now, in the world. Um, heroin is something you don't just try. It's not a gateway drug. That's the destination drug. 
that's where you go. And you're always chasing that first time you got high. You're chasing the dragon. There's always a way to get back. In fact, I'm organizing a way. There's actually a, an organization in Middletown, in Franklin, Ohio, Middletown area, that I'm going to be speaking and helping mentor some of these um, these people recovering or try or fighting their addiction to heroin and other um, street drugs, other recreational drugs, which are just crippling our society, crippling our society. Um, you know, we have Narcan on every single police officer when people OD. We have a huge epidemic. But the thing is, the beautiful thing is, I made bad mistakes, but I was able to correct them. I was able to overcompensate. You have people who drop out of college, or drop out of high school, or drop out of elementary school, and can go back, get their GED, get their doctorate. You know, you can always make it. That's what I find inspirational. People who overcome shit or people who come up from nothing, nothing, and create their own future, their own opportunities. And everybody, you know, you look at our political system and who's involved, they're usually spoon-fed people. You know, they're usually people like, you know, Trump, everybody always gets on him about his, you know, may, oh yeah, you know, he had a million dollars to start his first company. That's great. And I don't, I don't hate on that. I'm kind of jealous and envious at a point. But here's the thing. You want to kind of look up to people you can attain to be. I think Phil Heath is a fantastic bodybuilder. I love his physique, love it. It's absolutely amazing, the 3D nature of his muscle bellies, the way it flows, the way it pops. But is it wise for me to aspire to be Phil Heath with my build? The one guy who had more um, in common with my physique than Phil was Branch Warren. Branch is about five years older than me, four years older than me, so I looked at him as someone I aspired to be. In fact, if you look at all my old competition photos from a couple years ago before I decided to hang up the trunks, if you notice, I do the same side try. Branch has always been known for having, while he has amazing arms, they're not on par with his chest and his back and the graininess he brings to his quads. The side tricep I do, I stole from Branch Warren because he's someone I can emulate. The key is to set role models or people you look up to that you can aspire to, to be like most. You know, aspiring for me to be like LeBron James on the basketball court would be really tough to do. While that's a hell of a shot, you know, I'd be like, you know what? Maybe that might be a little over the top. So when I was a kid, I don't know if y'all remember Kurt Rambis from the LA Lakers. There was magic in Kurt. I'm like, dude, if Kurt can make it, I can make it. And then I stayed at five foot seven the rest of my life, even though I was there and I was like five, six in eighth grade. So basketball, even though I started, I was the starting center on my eighth grade basketball team. Funny story. And I was supposed, my brother six one. Everybody thought I'd be six foot something. I didn't lift weights or anything. Nothing stunned my growth. God stunned my growth. I was just done. My mom was five foot two. My dad was five eleven. Took after my mom. Although my grandfather on her side was six foot uh, six foot one. It is what it is. Back to the lecture at hand. Okay. What I'm getting at is you want to lead by example. If you're a manager in a company, you want to lead by example. I'm going to give a couple good examples, and I'm going to let you guys go at it, okay? My whole thing is, I'm going to point to my business partner, okay? On the 4th of July weekend, we got more orders. We had more orders than Cyber Monday, and Black Friday and Cyber Monday are our biggest orders. And we thought we were adequately staffed. We weren't. I was out of town on business. What did Chad do? My partner, Chad Vordameshi, CEO of Tiger Fitness, he went in the back and he spent two days packing hundreds of orders himself, picking orders. You don't hear about, you hear the CEO of bodybuilding.com doing that? No. Why? Because they're sitting at their oak desk, polishing their nails, getting their manicures. You know, that's what they do. But Chad, as the CEO, getting the orders out was more critical to him than anything possible. I will never have a Thanksgiving weekend with my family again. Why? I, on Thursday, I have Thanksgiving dinner with my family, and as soon as we open Vegas, we need to have either Chad or myself in Vegas, because it's very critical that we get those Black Friday and Cyber Monday orders out within 48 hours of them being placed. Even on that, so on Friday, Black Friday, I fly out to Vegas, I ship all weekend, I work 15 to 18 hour days. The point where Birdman was on, Birdman, if you guys know Tiger Fitness Birdman, great guy. 
Um, Birdman and I flew out there to do this. Birdman was on the floor passed out. Like we worked to the point where our feet were hurting, but we did it. I'm, I'm a CEO within the company too. Chad and I are basically co-CEOs. So what happens? We lead by example. And I'm not saying I'm the first one to do this, but we're not afraid to roll up our sleeves and get dirty and make it happen. And that's what you need to do. That's who I've always emulated. I've always emulated the leaders who get out there and who do what needs to be done to make it happen. Our core efficiency, if we can't, it is okay for MTS Nutrition, make really fucking amazing products. Really amazing products. Products that people are like, wow, those are amazing. They taste good, they work, they meet label claims, and you stand behind them. And no matter what, I stayed up, we were on a business trip in Georgia the other day, yesterday. I actually just landed uh, at 9 a.m. at 9 a.m. this morning, went straight and got to work, went to the gym with my wife, spent some time with my kids. About to go on a bike ride with my kids right now. At night, Chad's in there. We're launching a new platform on the site. He's working. I'm answering consumer emails. We didn't get to bed till two. We were up at 4.30 to catch our flights. All right, that's what needs to be done. Our employees know we're always grinding. I'm turning around on Friday, I'm going to New York for an event, but I always get in touch with our consumers. You lead from the front. And I learned from some really amazing role models of how to do that. And that's what you need to look at. Find your place in this world. Find what you're good at. Find what you want to be. For us, we want to own customer service. And also the CEO needs to sell. You know what? There's a book, Ready, Fire, Aim. And it's a great book. And it tells a story about a CEO who's going out buying office furniture. And this guy's con is consulting him. He's like, what are you buying office furniture for? You haven't even made your first sale. So as a CEO, you're also in charge of sales. If a CEO can't sell his own product, he needs to fire himself. The owner of the company, the founder, his main job is to make sure that goes. For me, for us, we're different. We're a consumer demand company. My first priority is customers. If a customer emails me a question, that goes straight to the top. I move it into a folder in my priority list. I answer that first. Second is B2B which I handle all the B2B sales and Matt helps me with it. So customers and then businesses. Those are my two priorities and to get orders out on time. So for Black Friday, our number one mission, the products are there, we've promoted them, people bought them. Now what? We need to get it in your hands. We need to get it to you as soon as possible. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I want that thing picked up on Tuesday as soon as FedEx gets it at your house on Wednesday. In fact, if we get out on Black Friday, which we usually get out a lot of them, hey, we're gonna get it to you that Saturday because we're next day to most of the country. So the key is lead from the front, lead by example. And you know what? If you're a person who finds somebody motivational because of how they speak and the ideals they put in your head, that's great. But remember, motivational speakers are there to motivate. They're not always examples, but they could be very motivating. But I recommend you do is finding somebody that said, you say, you know what? Those are attainable ideals. Those are attainable achievements that I can do. And you follow them. And motivation is from within. Be motivated to be the best you that you can be and be motivated to do epic shit in life. I hope you enjoyed this little speech here. I appreciate you watching. I'm Mark Lobliner, tigerfitness.com. All right. Um, at the end of this video, I'll see a way where you can win a $50 gift card. Recommend you do that. Why not? You sign up for our newsletter. You like this video. You subscribe. That's great. Um, subscribe to this channel. We have epic stuff. We have a little bit of drama here and there. I'll go off. I'll do some uh, comedic rants, so to speak. We also have some great footage of my wife and I doing, um, not that, uh, doing podcasts and things like that. Um, on different topics, politics and everything. We might even have some training footage in here. This is my channel. Thank you guys for watching. That's not the game. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click on the link in the description box below to sign up for the Tiger Fitness newsletter. Within a week of publishing this video, we will give out a $50 gift card to tigerfitness.com to one lucky person who does all of these steps.